Alrighty, so I know this sounds really weird, but I actually obviously rewatch my videos just to make sure they uploaded correctly because that kind of shit happens. <laughs> that it's not a a rare thing that my videos somehow get screwed up, as well as like my electronics and all that. I've already talked about that before. So I was just letting my video play out and kind of listening here and there while I was cleaning up, and Boo was talking about he was gonna go to some sort of you know free tutorial or educational thing tomorrow. And then we determined that it's just, you know, not going to work out or whatever. He's not going to go. So I started while I was listening to my video in the background because me being a Libra and then having that Neptune signature that would make me potentially psychic. I can't, I don't, Libras don't usually develop ideas on their own. They are not like initiative people. They their creative process depends on interacting with other stimuli or other people so i'm starting to develop that quote unquote psychic uh potential abilities that i was projected to start developing a little after my birthday which was just a few months ago and so i'm trying to understand because I'm, I'm having issues with is it something like an ideation that I'm just really fixated on and I'm mistaking it for some sort of potential, I like to call it like a Neptunian Freudian slip, like that's what me and my boyfriend have called it, because I feel really uncomfortable calling it a vision or like a message or a psychic like vision or something. It just makes me feel weird. Like I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody else who does stuff like that. It's just that's not how I am. I like to try to be very thorough, and I try to validate my findings and things that I'm either involved in or that I'm talking about or I'm studying with other evidence from other different perspectives and studies. So it's really hard for me to accept or to even humor the idea of saying visions or something. So I attempt to try to debunk things that I come to epiphanies with. But my boyfriend's even argued back with me and told me that when I say random things after I hear something and, you know, I watch a video, I see some somebody do something, I hear somebody say a certain phrase or explain something like randomly I just it just comes out of nowhere and usually when I'm not talking rambling about a certain subject and just going from one subject to another but when I just instantaneously stop what I'm doing and just start meandering like a, a statement that's usually um, things that have been actually happening so I told him, I was like, well, there's that T-square, and I originally said in the previous video that the T-square, part of it is going to be in the ninth house, which is, is uh, re uh, re represents higher learning, education, so schools, in a way, higher school, higher learning, so it could be schools, institutions, it would be probably colleges or high schools or something, and the fact that Obama has a t has Black Moon Lilith in Libra and that's what's in the ninth house and it has a square with oh it has an opposition with Uranus and Aries and Uranus is in full effect now because it's been direct right so the last time that this actual aspect happened the only different co the, the only different planetary aspect that was involved in this T square that was causing like the San Bernardino shooting was the fact that Mars was there which I would hope that that doesn't happen because Mars is in Scorpio. There would be a lot of lot of casualties. But the fact that it's in Mercury, which it just went... Not only is it retrograde, which is, you know, asking for it as it is. It, it's retrograding now into Capricorn, which is the... Essentially, you know, the ancient Scorpio in a way. And so that could have this, have similar repercussions. And so I just randomly blurted out, like I had one of my Neptunian Freudian slips, and I said, there might be a school shooting tomorrow. So I'm not saying that there is definitely, without a doubt, going to be a school shooting tomorrow, because I have no astrological evidence to back that up, other than just my random, you know, 
subconscious slip that came to that conclusion because as you can tell there's different there's different keywords that are associated with each house with each sign with each planet and then they can change or you know mold the the energy a little bit differently or du direct it in a different way depending on the the combination of said planets and houses and signs but I just came to that conclusion not because normally that t-square would indicate a school shooting but because Obama regardless if anybody wants to say it or not has obviously been pushing gun legislation from the get-go and I'm not the only one now which is amazing to see that has been that knows a little bit about <laughs> psychoanalysis and basic psychology and can pay attention to somebody long enough to to pick up on some things that Obama's being really shady and that he uh, that it, it can't I don't believe in coincidences anyway, but it cannot be like an actual coincidence if I wanted to even humor that coincidences were just, you know, that had no relevance, that there's been so many school shootings since he's been in office. I know part of that has to do with the urinals being an Aries in general, but as it's become more of like a, a goal or an agenda of his to prove his argument to have some sort of validity or you know to prove it right that that we should take guns away from people because it's not to keep the public safe because if it was there's plenty of different evidence correlating with that, that I mean that goes against that that proves otherwise so he's just trying to basically prey on the American public and essentially just induce fear and do some sort of gaslighting psychological manipulation to get people to go along with it and yeah so since Lilith is a key factor in part of his entire unraveling of the United States as a country at least constitutionally and how he's just basically like fucking the entire country over financially military foreign policy and then now he's trying to disarm us while bringing in people who will gladly maim us when they get the chance because everybody keeps now Americans are starting to get on board and realize what's going on in Europe and all I see on message boards is like well that's not going to happen here and it's like over in poor Germany you know because they don't have guns and I'm like that's going to be us soon hello hello <laughs> slippery slope hello Seriously, we're, we live in America. Are you telling me that there's Americans out there that have been like living in a cave their entire life and they have never ever had any kind of like, you know, experience or dialogue or whatever with some asshole that you tried to help out and then they ended up taking, you know, a foot instead of an inch thing? Do you not understand that concept? Do you not understand why, why, Edward Snowden permanently will never come back to the United States again. Do you understand how many times Obama has said one thing and gone completely and done the other? I know that all politicians do that because essentially they have some, you know, personal goals in mind, but then wh whatever their lobbyist wants them to do, they have to uh, address that agenda first. But he, it's almost like he's doing it on purpose, like he's... Because you know what he's actually doing, since him and I have similar aspects, I do that too. I do. My boyfriend knows this, some of my close friends know this, that if for some crazy reason I have to actually have some sort of alibi or a story or something, that I completely flesh out the entire thing. And I also understand too that if I volunteer information, like, you know, unprovoked or whatever, that that is a classic sign of projection and if Obama took a took a, or studies a little bit more of psychology as much as I have he would see how bad he's projecting because I used to do that and luckily nobody that I was doing that to had an extensive psychology background and that's why I see it he's got Kiran in the first house so do I he's got Uranus in his seventh house so do I and he's got Jupiter in his twelfth house so do I 
first house has to do with the self. So trying to cover something up or, or trying to overcompensate for a lack thereof, uh, insecurity, weakness. I can definitely say that obviously I have one like that. Being a Libra, that's pretty much guaranteed anyway. Sorry to call it any other Libras, but y'all got your problems and you all are to the core, super sensitive and insecure about it. And then since I have Uranus in my seventh house, I, I will have really weird relations with people and I will also have psychopathic tendencies when it comes to other people's feelings or situations. Meaning that I am completely detached from them. And I can actually look at them and not view them as a human being. Therefore, I would feel no guilt or remorse for doing whatever I decided to do. And Jupiter being in the 12th house, usually the rule of thumb with the 12th house is that whatever planets are in the 12th house is unknown to the the person's chart that you're looking at so for example if Pluto was in the 12th house that person would have some sort of psychological or mental issue that they are completely unaware of and they have no idea how to solve if somebody had moon in the 12th house they would have some sort of deep-rooted emotional trauma or issues or intimacy problems or even to an extent have have like a be hiding an eating disorder because that's attributed to cancer of the moon the stomach so people that are like closet eaters or you know that hide food at night those would be attributed to somebody with moon and can uh, the moon in the 12th house and so on and so forth you keep going on like if neptune was in there it would mean that there's some sort of underlying chronic probably psychological like mentally mental disturbance disturbances or condition that is unknown to them that would be a schizophrenic signature and also um if like saturn was in there that would be like a control problem that they're unaware of which i actually think obama actually has saturn in that house too so he has control issues that he apparently is unaware of but i don't really understand how he could be unaware of that he has a Virgo Mars, just like I do, and I know I have control issues, but I'm also a little bit more honest with myself than most people are, and clearly more aware than Obama. But the here's the kicker. The only planet that does not follow that rule is Jupiter. In fact, instead of that being a, a, um, a disadvantage, it's actually an advantage, because in ancient astrology, Jupiter was associated with God. And the whole concept that God sees everything, God sees all. Therefore, the fog effect that is caused by the 12th house is not going to be impacting and it cannot, and it does not affect Jupiter. And in fact, it actually feeds more into the psychopathic tendencies because instead of some, some sort of part, uh, some part of that person being hidden away from their their conscious mind something a part of them that they'll never be aware of they actually are a mirror and they turn that backward and they can then see the deep dark motives and secrets of other people that they're unaware of so i'm not talking about secrets that people are intentionally trying to keep but the things that that other people don't understand about themselves those are blatantly obvious to people that have Jupiter in the 12th house. So Obama has that. And so since placements take more precedence over the actual signs of those, those placements, I actually have quite a bit in common with Obama. And I don't like to say that. Because I think he's a fucking bastard. The difference between him and I is that I will admit that I'm a total bitch sometimes, and I am. And also another thing is, too, is I have... I got over lying a long time ago. It's exhausting. And also, I hate being fake with people. I think part of that comes to the fact that I, I kind of get off on, on conflict sometimes. Because I have Venus conjunct my Mars, so I'm naturally combative. So, I don't know what is his problem maybe it's because he's a leo and he feels like he needs to be adored and for you to be adored you actually have to be nice to people and fake shit but i just never had that issue 
so I don't know. But the fact that he also has Scorpio as his MC, so I have my Aquari uh, my my MC is Aquarius. Aquarius, like I said before, is weird, eccentric, unpredictable. Like it doesn't, you know, would try to put their pants on their head, like retarded to the point. That's why I'm very unconventional. I'm fucking weird. Everybody finds me like either a train wreck to watch or very entertaining at the very least. For him, he has a Scorpio MC. So he is putting on a face, most definitely. He has more depth and different layers to him that probably even his his wife and family don't know about. There's things that will be in his back in the back of his closet, secrets and skeletons that no one will ever see unless somehow technology catches up with it and he lets something slip. No shit. <laughs> But, um, so, since he has Scorpio there, he's, he's also naturally going to be charismatic, and he's going to have this ability to psych people out, and psychologically try to manipulate people. Which clearly, by at least that last, that last whatever, you know, town hall meeting that was invite only, which is totally fucking weird. The whole point of a town hall address is so the whole town can go, it's not, there's no invite only. But uh, he was clearly manipulating someone from the get go, and I even just posted a YouTube video of a gentleman who has a very cool YouTube channel, I think his name is like Chowder? Chowder? I'm sorry, I'm butchering it. He's really cool though. He's the first person I've actually seen besides Crowder, Crowder. Crowder, there we go. Yeah. That guy's the shit. He's the first person I've found on YouTube or in general at all, besides like maybe my boyfriend, that has seen what I'm talking about with the psychological manipulation. Maybe people need to go watch some Zam Vakna videos. Which wouldn't hurt anyone. I mean you're gonna run into a psychopath at some point in your life. They claim that there's only there's psychopaths within society that it's a one to two percent of all the population are psychopaths. But since the majority of them actually um, are white collar and or don't break the law, I would actually I would just from what I know and how many I think I ran into, at least like mildly, because there's no like black or white diagnosis with that. It's a grayscale. So it's it, they actually use a, like an actual test that has a certain amount of numbers. So there's like mild psychopathy, like you know, moderate psychopathy, and then full blown. You're probably sadistic and going to be fucking Ted Bundy if you like violent porn kind of thing. Psycho psychopathy. I myself tested between I was above the first first portion and into the second portion. And then I also took another test again because I actually have the di the DSM. And when I was a little bit more crazy, I wouldn't say crazy, but you know, um, yeah, I, I just had a little bit more influence of Uranus. Let's go with that. <laughs> um, I was having a transit moment. I, oh, I was close, I think like maybe five, six points away from being in the high range. And some people that know me can attest that there has been some times that they probably thought that I was more than capable of doing things that would constitute somebody being in the high range. So what I'm saying is that projection, uh, the pot calling the kettle black, somebody who's guilty of doing the same thing, if they're aware of themselves and they're honest and they're not regurgitating this fucking projection guilt and denial onto everybody else, they can actually be successful and pick out the people that are guilty of doing the same things as them because they are aware of what they do. And so I would say I probably one in every 15 people I meet have psychopathic tendencies. So that's I, definitely that's a lot more than one to two percent. And there's actually a lot more female psychopaths than um, statistically estimated because 
they underestimate and they don't actually they didn't actually flesh out the the uh, behavior behavior characteristics of female psychopathy female psychopathy and seeing as I know the signatures astrologically I can see it in mine and also since um, psychopathy sociopathy actually is partial they say partially hereditary it's not guaranteed but I mean if you have some crazy chemical imbalances in your brain that there's somewhere along the line that that is a genetic factor and or an environmental factor so regardless if it actually comes directly t into you as soon as you're developed and you know you're you're alive and well and you're a baby and everything if that didn't expose you to anything genetically you absolutely were exposed to it environmentally psychoanalysis proves that the environment actually has more of an influence on the potential psychopathy of an individual as opposed to genetics. So, this got way, way ranty, but yeah, so there might be a school shooting tomorrow, or why might be pulling some shit tomorrow, or. Well, it could be. Transportation! Oh! Planes! Okay, a plane might crash. Or some sort of transportation that would be leaving the country. Um, because the ninth house has to do with uh, travel, distant travel. Because the third house is supposed to do with, wait a minute. Uranus is in the third house. Okay, so scratch that. It's not just planes. It could be anything. Um, mm, no shit! Oh, wait, 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 wait! Oh, Mercury's in, in Capricorn, too. Capricorn is the same thing that was causing the, the landslides. Yeah. The bridges to collapse. And the water to destroy all the highways. Okay. Mm -mm. If any of my friends actually watch this all, and they're traveling tomorrow, you wanna hit me up and let me look at the thing and... <laughs> Make sure when you're actually leaving, like if you're getting on a plane or if you're driving anywhere, um, if you if you're going to still go, um, I'll just look at it at least and let you know if there's a good chance that it might get you, <laughs> or you might just be in the right place at the right time. Because that's always the issue is that now I'm noticing this with uh, using different locations and coordinates. There can be that influence the entire day. But there's a specific latitude, longitude as to what the way that like the earth is actually turning to where that energy is pinpointed like a laser right there. So I could give you a better idea than that, but I would just stay home. And watch for your heaters and and um, water heaters. And maybe things catching fire. Check your dryer your lint and don't leave any heaters on unattended and don't over don't overwork your like your ports your plugs or anything keep an eye on that because there's double fire going on tomorrow with some some of those uh with saturn and with uranus and there was some sort of aspect with that so yeah